Okay, back to factoring techniques, part two. I uh, just want to tell you guys, I know you're getting really good at this, and just with a little bit of perseverance and continued practice, you're going to get even better. So please hang in there. Don't give up on me. This is going to pay off for you. So let's start with this one. First, the thing is, it asks us to factor completely. We get 2x to the fifth plus 24x is equal to 14x cubed. So the first thing I want to do is I want to move everything to the left-hand side of the equation. That is, sometimes you hear, set the equation equal to zero. So I'm going to do that, and when I do that, I'm going to rearrange things a little bit to put it in order, if you don't mind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add negative 14x cubed to both sides, so negative 14x cubed. <clears throat> I intentionally did not put this negative 14x cubed under the 2x to the fifth, and I also didn't put it under the 24x to the first power. Remember that when you're going to add or subtract variables, they have to be the same variable and the, to the same exponential value when you're adding or subtracting them. Be really careful that the rules of exponents are not the same for multiplication as they are for addition. So please be very, very careful. So I'm going to rewrite these things. It's 2x to the fifth first. So 2x to the fifth, right? I'm going to put these in order highest to lowest by exponential value of the variable. So that would give us, then after that would be minus 14x cubed, wouldn't it? And then lastly, our positive 24x. So positive 24 x equals zero. I didn't lose anything, just moved everything over. So from here, some guesses out there what I'm going to do next. I think you know exactly. I'm going to look for the greatest common factor, and I'm hoping that I might get lucky, and the greatest common factor might be some number greater than zero. Uh, we have the number 2, 14, and 24. The greatest common factor of the numbers themselves seems to be 2. Can we agree on that? Remember, when we're taking the greatest common factor, of a variable, it's the exponent, the lowest exponential value that they share. So if we look, this is x to the fifth, x to the third, x to the first. So we can pull out an x to the first power only, right? Now we'll put this thing back together, right? And when, if we were to just redistribute to these terms here, we have to get this thing back. So 2x times x to the fourth would give us that back, wouldn't it? Um, times negative 7x squared, is that right? Negative 7x squared, and times positive 12. That's what I'm going with. Uh, you can check my math, and I hope that you are checking my math. How would you check it? You'd redistribute all of these pieces, and when you did, you darn well better get this thing back, right? And I think that we do. So I'm moving on now. I'm going to look at this piece here, and I'm going to pretend that this is a quadratic. It's not. It's quartic. But I'm going to try that same strategy because it works, right? So let's try that. I like that red. Let's try red. So I'm going to do this. So remember to set this up by two binomial factors. That one up here, one up here. I'm going to remember to bring this 2x down because it's still a factor, isn't it? And then, right, I have x squared times x squared is x to the 4. So here's my x squared times x squared. Remember that in FOIL, the this one times this one has got to give me this one back, and it does, doesn't it? Now I want two numbers. When I multiply the two numbers, I get positive 12. But when I add the same two numbers, I get negative 7. And those two numbers are? Wait for it. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Good. I agree. Negative 3, yes. And positive 4? No, because that would make this negative. Right? So it has to be a negative. If, it's going to, if this one's going to be negative, this one has to be negative. And look. When I multiply a negative times a negative, I get this positive. But when I add a negative number and a negative number, the sign stays the same, and I get this negative, okay? So we have to know what we're looking for here. So this would be 4, right? So the, this is the complete factor. No, oh my gosh, it's not the complete factorization. That stinks. Uh, can anybody see it? Take a second. Even pause the video after I stop talking and see if you can't figure out that one of these three things factors out uh, further. Okay, so you put it on pause, you came back, yay, and you figured out that it's what? Yes, it's this one. What is this? Here's a clue. D-O-S. Yes, difference of squares, and we know that this is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. Remember that this 4 to us is 2 squared, isn't it? So we get here for the, the two factors of this are x minus 2 times x plus 2. Isn't that right? x plus 2. Two. This thing does not factor out any further than this. Remember, these are factors, not solutions. So that one doesn't. And then we have this. So the complete factorization 
of our problem is this times this times this times this. These are factors, not solutions. Factors, not solutions. So when you see that on a test, factor something completely. It's different than solving. Solving asks us to take the next step, and that step is to ask ourselves, when does this equal zero? When does this equal zero? When does this equal zero? Or this equals zero? So factors, not solutions. Okay. I think I'm actually going, no, am I going to stop there? What do you think? Stop there, do one more. Um, let's try to do this, this next problem quickly together, okay? Let's see if we can't factor this out. Um, and this problem looks like this. It's 18x to the third minus 2x squared plus 27x minus 3 equals 0, and we're asked to factor this. And when I did this problem the first time, when I saw it, I, I didn't do it wrong. I did it a different way. I moved the pieces around. It came out exactly the same, but I did it a different way. And um, ask me about it later. I'm sure it'll thrill you to death. So I'm looking here. I don't know that this has any common factors, does it? So if I'm going to factor by grouping, and I think what I'm going to try to do here is this. Can I factor out here? I think we can factor out. Um, we can factor out two, can't we? So we factor out two. This is x cubed, this is x squared, so we can factor out 2x squared. Does that sound all right? Changing colors, changing colors, changing colors. 2x squared times what gives us, oh, sorry, this is what I'm looking at. I'm, looking at, I'm factoring this by group, so I'm looking at this piece right here, and I'm looking at this piece right here. So now I'm factoring from this. So this goes to 9x, doesn't it? Yeah, and then 2x times negative 1 gives me that back, right? And then here, what can we factor out here? We can factor out 3. And wouldn't it be great if we factored out 3, and the remaining factor happened to be 9x minus 1? That would be really cool, and you'd think I was so smart. Uh, and no, you already think I'm so smart, gotcha. So 3 times what? 3 times 9x. Looking good, right? 3 times what is negative 3? Negative 1, right? Equals 0. And all we're going to do is we're going to simplify this, right? Instead of doing it this times this and then this times this, we're going to put the, this piece and this piece together. And take a really quick look at this. I think it works out good. We have 2x squared plus 3 times 9x minus 1. So people say, well, what happened to this one? Did, you, did I just cancel that out or something? No, it didn't cancel out. Look, 2x squared times this. That's this 2x squared times that. And then I don't need this one. This positive 3 is this one. I'm just going to use this piece again. So this times this, and then this times this. It works out good, doesn't it? Okay, so I hope that was a thrill a second for you. Uh, it was good for me. Um, please remember, we're looking for greatest common factor. We're looking for factor by grouping. We're looking for patterns that we see. You're getting good at this. Please keep up the good work.